Welcome to this look at new mods on Farming Simulator 19 with me, Mr. Sealy P. It is Tuesday the 1st of September. We have new mods. We have some updates. Um, the updates are as follows. Top left, we have an update to the MRF Special Low Loader TL539 by Mr. Force Technic. Bottom right, we've got an update to the JSA Swath Roller by Luca Modding, and next to that, the Ursus N270 by Matt26. In between those, we've got updates to the Open Sheep Pasture, the Open Pig Pasture, the Open Cow Pasture, and the Open Horse Pasture, all by Foo Farmer, which I'm just going to have a look at in a little bit more detail now. So, with the update and changes to the Foo Farmer um, Open Pasture placeables, that we've had today. I just thought I'd show this after showing talking about the updates. Um, when you come to place it now, you can see in the corners we've got these posts. And we can see, trying to get the angle right. Um, I'll zoom in on one now. Um, those posts give you the outer markers of the nav mesh underneath. So you can see where it's actually going to be the boundaries of this. And now that a couple of things with that, when you place it, like I'll place it now, they've now disappeared. And as you can see on the ground, those marker posts have gone on the ground. Now the mod itself remains almost the same. There are a few little changes um, here and there. Now it does say in the change log on this, added visual markers when you're placing the pastures so you show you where the animals will wander to. After the placing, the markers can disappear. Now, um, train sheep to give you more room when offloading wool and to stay off things you park in the back of buildings so the nav mesh has been adjusted so the animals don't go to places where you're going to be kind of more often so when you're loading and unloading it doesn't get in the way which is all very nice indeed now the other thing is the reason for the nav mesh change and the reason why this is different if i open up my help menu and go to this now if you go to the little bucket on each of these upgrades there's a bucket now and it says show boundary post so if I press circle hear that? the boundary posts have now come up out of the ground now why is that important? if you're going to place these as an open pasture but then you decide you want to place other things around it like a shed or you do want to put your own fencing somewhere or a building up close to it what will often happen is the nav mesh is the distance to where your animals will walk to, so they won't go any further than the nav mesh. Now their bodies will come to there, often the heads will extend a little bit over where the nav mesh is, but this gives you a boundary and a marking point, especially when it comes to placeables, to tell you where those animals are going to be, where they're going to go to. So if I do want to put a shed or a building or a barn or whatever next to it, um, I know that when I have placed it and I go into that building from the other side or wherever, I'm not going to have a cow's head sticking through it or something like that. It just helps me with the placing of objects around it. Because normally it will, there will be a boundary, there will be a fence, there will be something that tells you you can't. With the open passes you don't know what that is. So that's a nice feature that's been added that by, by Foo Farmer. I like that as an option. It just gives you, and again, if you want to put your own fence around it, it again shows you where the nav mesh boundary is going to be, so you can align it a little bit better. If I go back up to that, hide boundary post. And down it goes into the ground again. Um, so that's part of the upgrade on that, the update on that. Um, very nice indeed. It does say added more toilet paper. <laughs> um, and adjusted the wall pallet spawn area, because I think before there was a slight problem, I think, with it. But, uh, yeah, cool mod. Very nice indeed. Nice upgrades, updates to the um, open pastures by Foo Farmer. So, first of the mods. Uh, the first two, actually, I, it's a technicality with the new or updates, I think, personally speaking. Um, the first one is... Seasons Geo Lowry Minnesota by Mappers Paradise and what we have in front of us is the Millennial Seed Palettes. Now these were both previously released but they were removed from the um, mod hub and then we're getting them back again. I suppose technically they are new if they've been completely changed and put out back out again um, but we have technically already had them even if it was briefly but um, <laughs> there are still problems uh, but anyway Millennial Seed Palettes right here in front of us. Um, this you'll find under Palettes. There. 
So 2,100 litres for 1,650, and it says fertiliser pallet for crops. Millennial seed pallets, fertiliser pallets for crops. So which is it? Fertiliser or seed? It's actually seed, it's not fertiliser. So, I don't know. I bought two. I thought, okay, maybe it is fertiliser then. And this, I'm sure I said this last time when it released, um, but it is seed, it's not fertiliser. Um, so... But there you go, 1,650 for 2,100 litres of um, millennial seed, if that's what you want. Um, moving on from there, we have got this. This is the Concrete Fences Pack by Casper. Um, we have got quite a few options available in here. You've got a solid slab, then we've got various different textured and heights. So we've got this is a standard one, and then we've got an extra high one. But like I say, various different patterns. Three bar, four bar, one with a concrete sort of gate section, and then a four bar one with the section up the top. And then right at the very end, uh, we've got the fence post that goes with the shorter sections and a fence post that goes with the longer sections. Um, these are one slot each to place. Various different prices. We'll have a look at them in just a second. But um, so if you want to put concrete fencing around a building or wherever you want to put your con concrete fencing, that's entirely up to you. Uh, these you'll find under placeables, under under miscellaneous. There we go. So we've got fence 1, 150, fence 2, 250, fence 3, 100, and so on as we go through all the various different options available in there. That's the concrete fence pack by Casper. Moving on, we have got this. Uh, this is the Lizard Cal 3M. This is by Sloitches Modding. This is designed for small machinery, small farms. This is a fertiliser or lime spreader. It's got fairly small capacity. Um, nicely detailed little mod. It's, you know, does what it's intended to do. It rolls along and it dispenses its fertiliser. Or lime. Uh, this you will find under tools, under fertilizer technology. There you go, 3,500. Um, 1,400 litre capacity, it will run at 8 miles an hour. The spread width is the width of the actual machine because I think it actually comes at the bottom of this. It will do lime or fertilizer options available. We can change the main colour to anything on that palette, like so. Then we can change the rim colour also to anything on that palette, like so, so you can mix and match it as you wish. Just hook up. So, turn it on. As you see, just pause at the bottom. Just like that. Uh, you can open the cover for loading in and close cover again. That was um, on the PlayStation controller, that was just uh, L1 and left on the D-pad to open and close, like so. L1 and square to start. I know I'm absolutely preaching to convert it here, but I do have a lot of people asking me, um, how do you how do you um, get certain operations to work how do you get certain things to work and that may well be if people are new to the game they're not quite sure of the control systems and stuff like that yet um, I, I, I know I say this a lot I have got my Logitech heavy equipment side panel plugged into my PlayStation 4 and I have got dedicated buttons however if I go into the menu like so and then scroll across when you get to this menu here so L1 or R1 if I get to this menu up top it says help window on or off if you put that on, that gives you a help window, top left, and then you can press your various different button configurations. So I can do L1, that gives me options, R1, so if I get into a vehicle, for example, um, L1, R1, L1 and R1 will give you various different configurations and buttons for that particular vehicle or implement, but by pressing, pressing triangle, I can switch between my tractor and my implements, whatever I've got on there, so you have to make sure you're on the correct one. So at the moment I'm on tractor, L1, R1, 
and I can go through the, the options available and button configurations available for each implement or machine. So if ever you're stuck and you're not quite sure or you didn't quite catch it on, on the video or I didn't say on the video, if you open up your help menu, like I say, on my on my um, side panel, I have got a button to turn that on and off directly um, without going into the menu. But if you haven't got one of those, you need to go into the menu to do it. Um, but I would always suggest if you're not sure of a control or a button press something, just do that and it will give you whatever options are available at that moment in time. Uh, moving on, we've got this. Also by Casper, we had the concrete fences packed by. This is the old Polish cow building. Um, this is another one. I'm, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to spend hours trying to get this to work just to show. I know it sounds, people say, it's your job. Okay, that's what you think, that's up to you. Um, but this is your dialog box there. Buying or selling, uh, loading or unloading of your cows. Now, this will take 15 animals. When you buy them, I've bought four. Inside, we've got these static animals. These doors do open and close, like so. Uh, so we've got these static animals. So when you buy them, you don't actually get an animal appeared. No animals actually appear in here. The problem is the triggers are all right on top of each other, although they are marked, and there is something with each one to kind of help you along with that. Um, so that's your dialogue box. This is your water, and the little water trough, sorry, is just behind there. Then we've got this one here, which is your slurry. This one here is your milk trigger. There's a milk pail, and that one just behind there is the straw trigger. Now I backed a trailer up with straw, and the straw trigger came up, so I managed to put bedding in, as you can see in there. Um, that door opens as well, and so do these ones up here. So you have technically kind of got a little hayloft if you want to do small bales and throw them up there, whatever you want to do. But the problem I'm having is the feed trigger because the feed trigger is all the way back there. It's not at the front. Now I tried driving around the back of here, thinking, oh maybe I can do it from the back. Wouldn't work. Now unless I'm supposed to take feed in there in bucketfuls, handfuls, or in a teacup, I'm, I'm not. I can't get to that trigger, at least not. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you're supposed to get to that trigger, but I assume that's the feed trigger back there. Um, there are lights. There was a light switch. Where was that? It was just here, wasn't it? Oh, that one did the gate. The problem is that the triggers are so close to each other. No, nope, it's not going to work now. Of course, it's not. Right. There we go. I'll climb. Please open. Now I can't get the. Now I can't get the door trigger. <laughs> this you will find under placeables. Under animal pens. Forty thousand to buy. Holds fifteen. Uh, slot count on that is twenty-eight. Um, yeah, <laughs> go for it if you wish. That's by Casper. Uh, next up, also by Casper, today we've got the Polish barn. Um, this is 18 slots. Interesting animation having the prop there but it only props one side I'm not sure why it only does one side but oh because there's a hook that side is that why yep okay something a bit different um, inside nicely detailed uh, light switch again please work uh Oh, there we go. Got them in the end. Oh, that does under that one. Why make things easy and have one? Let's have multiple. I can't get a light switch. Option to come up for the other ones. Open gate. Great. Seriously. Oh, there we go. We got it. There we go. Light switch in there. A little bit of a hayloft above there. Really nice detail. Nicely textured. 18 slots. Uh, you will find this. Under placeables. Under sheds. 
There you go, 35,000 to buy. Um, and like I say, 18 slots. That's also by Casper. That's three mods by Casper today. Uh, moving on, we have got this. This is the Garden Decking and Pool. This is by ABP Adub Modding and ABP Ben M Modding. No, Ben M Mods, sorry. Really nicely detailed, nicely textured, little decked area here, little barbecue, deck chairs, pagoda, little pool, nice animation and shimmer on the water. This is just a decorative placeable, somewhere to kick back after a day's farming when you're feeling a bit worn out and fancy a barbecue and a relax. This may be what you're looking for. Um, this is three slots to place. You'll find this... I want to say under decoration. I think it was placeables and decoration. There you go. 600 to buy. Not too expensive. It's not a sleep trigger or anything like that. It is simply just a placeable decorative object for your farm or farmhouse or garden or whatever else you may have. Um, so, moving on from there, before I forget, I almost did, um, these are the mailboxes by Cashstan18. There are two of these in the pack, numbered 1 to 6 and 7 to 12. These are, as you can probably tell, Polish post boxes. Just a decorative, placeable. Um, you'll find these under decoration. I'm sure it was. So there we go, 400 each to buy. There are only one slot each as well um, to buy and place the mailboxes by Castan 18 Which takes us on to... We've got this. I am starting to wonder whether or not Mappers Paradise and the Subby are going to release the uh, Millennial Farms map like piece by piece. <laughs> we'll just get it. It's like a jigsaw you kind of put together by the end of it. I'm not too sure what's happening. But um, this is the Midwest Machinery dealership. So, is this the first placeable dealership on console? The answer to that is yes and no. Um... It may require an upgrade. I don't know. It's a massive placeable. I mean, it is a huge footprint, and you need a big, big, big flat area to put this down. Really nicely detailed. Loads of, like I say, loads of detail on this. Um, it does say it's fully animated and seasonally prepared, which is lovely. Um, inside, nicely detailed. If you recall, no, did I go to I didn't do the map tour, did I? Because it was, this was supposed to be a surprise when the map came out. Um, but inside, big open space in here. The detailing on the walls and everything is absolutely great. I love all this. Looks fantastic. All the John Deere related paraphernalia. Service department through here. The door does open and close into a cavernous warehouse space behind. Which we'll get to in just a moment. However... Is it the first placeable dealership on console? At the moment, no, it's not. Um, it does say, and I know people say, oh no, that's only on PC. Then why release it on console? I don't understand. But anyway, it says, here we have the Midwest Machinery Dealership based in Minnesota, USA. They are specialised in John Deere machines. You will find your purchases in the large warehouse. This is a very large building that is fully animated and seasonally prepared. Now, on the website, on the Mod Hub, it shows three pictures, one of which, and I remember when I did the map tour, when I had a look around myself, when the map first came and I had a pre-release version of it, the store icon is just here, above this little podium-type affair. As you can see, it's not there. Um, if I have my help window and walk up to it, nothing comes up saying, open shop menu or anything at all um i've been all around all the way around this bit i thought maybe it's over here maybe it's been moved to the console release part of it i'm not too sure um nothing i i now we have already got a store every map you will get will have a store on it but i don't think there's been a map released yet that doesn't have a store on it on console that i can think of um but it would be cool to have one you can place so if you do want to change the map around a little bit and have one close to where you are whatever it's entitled to you but i can't find the trigger for the store menu. Now, people will argue, you don't need it, do you? Because you can go into this menu here, scroll across to get to your vehicles and just buy them. But the whole point about having the store is, when you buy them, 
it does say um, you will find your purchases in the large warehouse. Well, unless this is actually the trigger point, unless this is the point where you've bought your vehicles, they're not going to appear here. If I go into this menu and buy them, they're going to appear at the one that the map starts with. Um, they're not going to appear in here. Now, this bit out of the back is massive. Tons of space. Animated doors, all very nice. We've got another one around the side here. Doors open, etc. Like it's all animated. Everything does what it should do. Uh, we've got this one over here, and then we come to an icon. And you think, oh, okay, I've made a mistake. It's here. So when I come up to it, it says open vehicle options. This basically is the workshop trigger. I know it says that it's got the basket picture there, but this is the workshop trigger. That's the point there where you bring your vehicles in. And if I click on that, it says you can customize or repair your vehicles. Sell, customize, repair. Um, that's the point here. Which, in essence, then, unless this does get an update and a trig, we get a trigger out the front for it being an actual dealership, an actual store. This is an absolutely massive and expensive workshop. I, you know, I suppose you could use it for storage if you want it to be a big. You know, you could have this as your main farm point, I guess, if you want to. Um, Again, the argument may well be made, oh yeah, but that's only on PC. Okay. But again, my point is, why release it on console then? I don't... It doesn't make any sense. Um, it's a huge, huge building. It costs 500,000. And if it is just a workshop trigger, I there are cheaper workshops and workshop triggers. I don't know. I don't... I'm, I, I'm, I'm acting and speaking the way I am because I'm a bit disappointed, I'll be honest. I thought, this is fantastic. We haven't had a placeable dealership on console. This is the first time. And this can change things for players, and this will change things massively if it is, because it gives you the potential then to say, OK, this could be a thing now. We could start getting all different sorts of dealerships that we can place wherever we want in our maps. Um, it doesn't seem to be the case. Uh so yeah, I don't know. Like I say, it's it's nice and I like it, and the detailing's great, and you know the fact that all the door I placed another one over there because I thought maybe it's just where I've placed it. Maybe there's an issue with that. Um, now it's not even like on console. I can sell the one that's already on the map. You can't. That's integral. So it may be that on console the maps will only allow you to have one dealership trigger. Again, in which case, why release it on console? I, I'm. They must have gone to the effort of actually preparing it for console release. It must have been. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We'll see. It maybe maybe it will get an update. Um, this you will find under placeables. This one was under sheds actually. There you go. Midwest Machinery Dealership, five hundred thousand to buy. Uh, it's only twenty slots to place, which is great. Um, but like I say, it's a very very big building. Requires a lot of lot of space and you're probably going to need to have it as flat as you possibly can to put this down so yeah don't know um take that as you will i'm sure i'm going to get a lot of grief in the comments for being so negative about mods but it is what it is i'm just reporting on what's in front of me what i can see so apologies for that uh which brings me on to i think the last of the mods for today and it's this uh this is the john deere 6200 um this is by cola this is one vehicle it's not a pack but there are some variations on this it also comes with three headers it comes with these 213 and 216 um regular sort of serial crop header and it also comes with the um 4209 corn header which we can have a look at in just a second this is a very very small something like 3900 litre capacity i think it is we'll have a look in a second um really cheap as well it does say in the mod hub this machine was launched in Brazil in 1983 uh, and together it would carry innovations such as turbo powered engine and hydrostatic transmission. Um, in 1986 the turbo version was launched with 148 horsepower Mercedes Benz engine. So hence the kind of open cab design because it was designed kind of for Brazil, hot climates, those kind of things. Um, but you could run a few of these because of the price as well which is pretty good I'll be honest it's a fairly blocky design but it's an old design 
of vehicle. And there's a couple of options with regards to kind of decals and that kind of thing, which we'll have a look at. Now, uh, this you'll find under vehicles, under harvesters. Look at the price. <laughs> so, we can have it like that, standard. 3,900 litre capacity, which isn't big, but 9,100. That's all for a harvester. That definitely puts it the cheapest harvester on console. I'm pretty sure. We haven't had another mod that has been that cheap. Uh, same mod, harvester mod. Um, so we can have it a hood design, like so, which has got the hood, the cover, like that. Or we can have it with a cabin, which adds nothing, apparently. Um, and then we've got the 6200 OM, which is 130 horsepower. Or we can have the 6200 Turbo, which adds 1,100 onto that. Brings up to the 148 horsepower. And then we can have the same 6200 Turbo with a different decal. Um, so for 10,200, we've got a 3,900 litre capacity harvester. Um, that's 23 slots for the harvester. Um, and if I come back out of there, that's saying at the moment how many slots? Two. So after buying the first one at 23, you could have multiple ones of these on a map for 10 grand a pop. And I'm saying that simply because of the header size, because the headers we get with this as well. Um, if you scroll across. So we've got the 213, which is a 3.8 metre, and we've got the um, 216, which is a 4.6 metre. Now, whether other headers will attach to it, I'm sure loads will. Again, there are so many modded headers and, and things available now, it would be almost impossible to go through and check them all to see which ones fit, which ones don't, which ones raise and lower, and, and you know. But 4.6 metres isn't that bad a size, especially for a small map, small farms, that kind of thing. Um, and I say, if you have multiple ones of these running, that's you know that kind of equates to a bigger header size if you have two running that gives you a what's that a 9.2 meter width if you've got two running with 4.6 meter headers and that's going to cost you 20 grand the header's 2200 the small header's 1800 that is really really cheap uh, no options available uh, on the headers themselves but then we've also got up under the corn headers we've got the 4209 1800 for a three meter corn or sunflower header if you're going to do sunflowers again no options available on that now have i used it in anger have i done multiple fields have i been across all different terrain on every single map i haven't are there going to be any issues glitches problems i don't know i would like to think not but again with any mod that gets released i'm just looking at it in the mods hub this is the mod these are the features this is what you get with it um the more it gets used the more people that use it you may find issues i don't know generally speaking people will comment and say to me oh actually i found it does this it does that or this happens that happens um, again i can't test every permutation every possible eventuality when i'm just looking at it as a mod um but I, you know, I quite like it nice and small so i think i went with the 4.6 meter i'm sure that is the uh, 216 header i've got on there Horn, lights, pipe in, nice smooth animation, uh, I can close that off like so, so opening or closing the harvester is like that, puts the ladder down, opens the top bit, you can see the auger in the top there. Runs at 15 miles an hour, so for a small harvester pretty good in cab I suppose in cab you can call it in cab this is the open cab version no difference to the buys on really but just a cheaper version I suppose actually that's a good point well mine's gone blank what size is the buys on that's only that kind of size isn't it 3540 so slightly larger than the buys on um, and way 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 cheap um, is it as detailed as the buys on I don't think it is but you know love you can see the auger right behind us right up close to it but anyway uh let's switch to the other one so this is one that i've gone with the, with the cab instead uh, again we'll go for the light options we've got more lights up on the cab section there and in cab it's not a lot of difference other than you just closed in a little bit really
And there we go, that's the John Deere 6200, 213, 216 and 4209 by Kohler. And I think that's it for the mods for today. Um, like I say, apologies if I if I came across negative, negatively or you know, I just I get you know when new mods come out, especially ones with a lot of potential, and you get very excited and think, oh, this is amazing, and it doesn't quite you know, doesn't quite fulfil. I always get a little bit. Uh. Anyway, that's the mods for today on the first of September, twenty twenty. Where has the year gone? I hope you found this useful and informative in some way, shape or form. If you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.